Okay, hi everyone. Welcome to your auto renewals overview webcast today. Um, so the purpose of today's webcast is just to really explain our auto renewal feature in Association Online um, and just give you an, an overview of how it works and how it may work for you in your system. Uh, I know some of you already are using it, so this is a great refresher, um, or some of you have it but haven't used it yet. So this is a great chance for you to review how the order in your process works. So what we're covering today, we'll be looking at, you know, explaining what the order in your feature is, why you would use it, how it works and how to set it up. I won't go in, in full detail on how to set it up. Um, it'd be a bit more of an overview, but we do have a manual that I'll show you how to access later on for those of you that are using it um, and how to set it up properly for your system. We'll look at some of the, the auto renewal emails. Um, we'll explain how your members can make their payment of the invoice and how the, you as the administrator will monitor the invoices that come through. So what is auto renewal? It is the process of automatically renewing your memberships for another 12 months. So rather than your members going online and doing, the, doing it themselves, the system will do it for them. What the system does, it updates the membership status, it creates an invoice and it will email the members the invoice as well. The only thing you do need to, well not the only thing, one of the things you'll need to note about auto renewal, it is best used with memberships that don't require any changes or updates at the time of renewal. So auto renewal will run, it will uh, it automatically renew the membership based on the previous year's membership. So it will be based on the same pricing option, the same settings, the same uh, requirements, the same membership type. Okay, so if you order and if you do require a member when they're when they're renewing their membership to make changes to update their details, um, the order renewal won't work for that particular membership. A number of our clients have membership types that they could use auto renewal with, and some that they wouldn't use it with, and that's okay too. It's your choice of which membership types you can use auto renewal with or you use it with. I'll explain that further on down the track. So why would we use auto renewals? You know, rather than have your members go on, you know, send them an email to say, your membership's about to expire, you know, click here, go and renew your membership. Why would we use auto renewals instead? Basically to save time. How many, I'm sure, I'm not going to ask the question, um, I'm sure many of you get the, you know, response from members, just send me the invoice and I'll pay it. Um, many of our members are time poor. So many people are busy these days, they have constant renewal reminders, they're members of different places, different associations, they, you know, reminding each of them to renew all the time can be quite, you know, time consuming for them to go online and do their own renewals. So by sending them the invoice, auto renewing them, they just need to pay. Some of our members aren't comfortable renewing online either. There are still a number of members that aren't tech savvy, they don't love to, to spend time online. So that might be another option for you. Auto renewals could be more beneficial there. It's also a way to increase your membership retention rate. You know, maybe you will get more members to, to stay on with you and, and renew for another 12 months when you've, you've already done it for them, they just have to pay you. So that, that can be uh, quite helpful as well. So how does it work? Basically, the, you as the administrator would set up the auto renewal process, the auto renewal will run, memberships are renewed, the members receive an email and an invoice, they pay the invoice and the renewal is complete. That's the basic process of it. Once you've set up your auto renewal process once, it will continue, we set the schedule tasks to run regularly. So the auto renewal process will just continue to run in the background without you actually requiring to do anything. Once you've set it up as an administrator, your basic job will be just to monitor your invoices or your accountant or bookkeeper will be the ones monitoring the invoices. The rest is done in the back end. So how do we set up the auto renewal process? So administrators will set up the process according to the membership type, the status and dates. I'm going to go into the back end of my system and show you a basic process setup and, and show you how you can test your setup as well. 
Okay, where did I go? <laughs> I've lost my uh, training centre. Here we go. Beautiful. Okay, so I'm in the back end of my system under members. When you have the auto renewal system or feature installed, it'll be sitting under your membership area, okay, where it says auto renewal. You can have more than one auto renewal process. You can set up multiple processes based on different memberships, different dates that you want to run it, and so on. So you're not restricted to one process at a time. So in my system, I have two auto renewal processes. Okay, they were run at eight o'clock this morning. Okay, they are active and I can edit the details here. I'm gonna look at the full membership one today. Let's have a look. Okay, so this is how you have um, set up your auto renewal process. You identify the process by naming it. You select which membership type or types that is eligible for this process. Okay, so you can multi, you can actually multi-select and you can do multiple memberships at once. What status are we auto renewing? So the current membership status that we want to renew. Now, this is often used, um, you know, if you are doing it before, running the process before they are due to expire, you might set the status to be active. Otherwise, um, if you're doing, if you're running the process after expiry, you might set the date, the um, status to expired. So it's dependent upon this information here. How many process days are you going to run the auto renewal before or after expiry? Okay, so you can set, you know, when you want to run the auto renewal process and based on which membership type and which status. Now for those um, clients that do use schedule payments feature as well, you can only renew members with payment schedules in here if you want to. You don't have to renew everybody, you can only renew those with schedule payments. Um, I will come back to collation by and explain that later on, but um, then we just make sure when we are running the auto renewal process that send emails is turned on. We want to send out that email with the invoice attached and that the status is active. Okay, so before you're ready to send it, you can deactivate it. Now this is the important part. Um, this will help you test, you know, your settings here to make sure it is working correctly. So for those that are using it already and wanted to do this session as a refresher, this is a good example of how you can test your setup. So according to these settings with these membership types, with this status, and if I process this auto renewal 34 days before it's due to expire, these are the results I will get. These are the people from my database that are going to be renewed. Now it tells me under expiry, the new expiry date will be 30th of September 18 according to my um, membership settings. There is a sample invoice I can look at to see what's included in the invoice. And it tells me the value as well. Okay, so you can, you can sort of, it's a, it's a great way to sort of test, as I said, that you are, do, you are using the right settings. Okay. So then we run the auto renewal process. Now to run it, we do, as I just mentioned before, need to make the this, this status active. We need to make sure send emails is ticked. We need to enable the default email in the system and we need to set the schedule task to run. So there's four steps to make sure that auto renewal runs correctly. So if you are using it and something's not working right, maybe come back to this checklist and go, okay, is it active? We turn send emails on, you know, is default email enabled and is the scheduled task set to run? With the auto renewal emails, um, how it works is usually, if, if you're not running auto renewals, we have those standard reminder emails that get sent out. Dear member, your membership's about to expire, you should renew click here to go and renew and they go online and do their own renewals. But with auto renewal, it's a different email. There's one email that's sent from the system, the default email. And you can leave, you can reword it, you can change it, you know, but basically you're saying to the member, we know you're busy, we've already renewed for you, here's your invoice, all you have to do is pay us. And then give them the details on how to pay. So, there is an email in the setup, 
in, in everybody set up under default emails, you will find it. It's You might need to control F to find it. But right in the middle of the, the email list there, you'll find this one, use a notification, auto renewal process complete. Okay, you just need to make sure that is enabled and you have put in the wording that you want to put in there. So here's an example email I've got. So dear example, <laughs> dear person, we would like to thank you for your membership. You know, attached you'll find your membership renewal invoice for the details below. All you have to do is pay. Here's your payment options. And I put, I put in links in there to the member center, to the my orders, and I'll explain that in more detail as well. And I always give them their username and their, you know, password link to set their password for the website in case they've forgotten. So what also happens once that email is sent, once the member is renewed, the membership statuses will change. So one of the things you need to be aware of is to change the settings. So when a member is renewed, the status is changed based on whatever settings are in the membership type set up. So one of this, the main setting that is impacted by auto renewal is this particular setting called renewal status, offline payment, the one that I've got the arrow against in the top there. So this is deemed, auto renewal is deemed to be an offline method of payment. So therefore, when they receive the invoice, you know, what's going to happen, their status will change to pending payment, okay? So they're not going to expire. We're actually skipping expiry date. So if it's um, they're due to expire at the end of December and we run auto renewals now, as of um, the 1st of January, they would normally expire. But if we run renewals now, they will change to, the status will change to pending payment from the 1st of January, unless they paid beforehand. <laughs> if you'd already marked off their payment, their status will go to active. So you can see there's a renewal status auto marked payment received, it will go to active. Okay, so there's a couple of things you do need to be aware of for the membership settings. And again, that is in listed in our auto renewal manual as well. So they've received their email, they've been renewed. How do the members pay that fee? So the best way to get them to pay is to send them to the member center on your website, send them to the My Order section, tell them to select the relevant invoice, it'll give them their invoice number and to go through the shopping cart and make payment with their credit card. So I don't know how many of you already know um, the process there, but if I go to the front end of my website and I go to the member center, I'll go to my orders, so and I'll see a record of my invoices listed here. So it might be called something different on your website, it might be my invoices or something like that. Okay. Um, I can view my invoice here and I can make a change of payment. When I click on make change of payment, it takes me to the payment gateway and I can choose my method of payment. Okay, so if you have those you want to get them to pay via credit card, it's less administrative work for you when they pay via credit card. So let me show you that in the back end. Let's run this auto renewal process. Okay, it was run this morning at eight o'clock, but in order to run the process, I need to go into admin setup. Now, this is for association online staff only. One of the things we do need to do is run the scheduled task. So for some of you, this may already be set to run on a, on a recurring basis. For others, it may not be set yet. If you're new to auto renewal, you will need to let our support team know you're ready to run your renewals and to turn on the um, auto renewal scheduled task for you. So I, my auto renewals process is active. It's due to run tomorrow at 8 a.m. and it's recurring every day. That doesn't mean my auto renewals are gonna recur, occur, recur every day, but it, what it means is that um, the system is going to look for any auto renewal processes that are required and run it. So for those that are using anniversary dates, you might have people renew on a daily basis, you know, or every second day, depends how many memberships you have. And for those that um, use uh, set dates, like end of financial year, you set the date that it will run and it will only run on that date, but we set it to recurring so that you don't have to come back and have it done again. Okay, you don't have to touch it, it will just continue to roll over. 
I'm just going to reset it for now so that it will run this auto renewal process for full memberships. Okay, and it will invoice and renew Iron Man, the Hulk, Captain America and myself. I don't know why I put myself in with a bunch of Avengers, but I like to think I could save somebody anyway. Um, and hopefully that will run shortly. It takes a couple of minutes sometimes when you run a scheduled task just to go through and, and uh, review that. Once it has been run, you can click on the renewal name and it will give you a log. I think this question was asked to me recently actually, can I get a dashboard of you know renewals and see a, an overview of how many were renewed and how many have paid for example. Here it is. This is your uh, renewal log. So here you can see the number of invoices, um, the number of memberships that were renewed, the total dollar figure in that renewal run, that renewal process, and how many were paid so far. Okay. Let's see if we just refresh that. Okay, it has been run. So now we should have a new log. Here we go up the top for today at 2.19. Four invoices, four memberships renewed at a total of $780. Beautiful, you can actually click into each of those log links as well and you can see the list of who renewed, who was renewed and how much they were each renewed for. Excellent, so the four of us have now been renewed. What happens next? Okay, we go and pay or you guys and monitor the invoices. So as administrators, you can send reminder emails for the, any unpaid orders. You know, I don't know how often you might do that. You might decide, you know, every week we'll send a reminder. And you'll remember, yeah, you know, you still owe us for your membership renewals, etc. And you will decide how long you'll give them to pay. So how long will you give them to make payment? Three months, six months, two months? What happens if they don't pay? You could cancel the order and change the membership status manually to indicate that they're not renewing. So here's an example. If we go to the commerce section now, we'll see those four new invoices that have come through. And you can see the method of payment is invoice. Okay, from auto renewal, they, it creates the method of payment called invoice. So you can actually filter your list. Let's say we've got, we want to see all of the invoices that are pending payment that are invoiced from the membership module. Beautiful. Okay, these are all the unpaid auto renewals so far. I've run some the other day, so there's a few in there. Let's say, okay, Captain America's paid, we've received his money in our bank account or he paid online via credit card. Um, either way, we can just mark, let's say he paid, all good. So now when he gets to the end of um, his membership for expiry, he will automatically go straight to active again. But what if these people don't pay? Let's say the Hulk, we've given him three months to pay. He's not joining, I don't know if that's a good example. <laughs> he might hurt us if we just cancel his membership. Um, but we can say, look, the Hulk isn't going to pay us. We haven't heard back from him. We followed up with a phone call. We followed up with multiple emails. He hasn't responded. Maybe he's moved on. Maybe he's not with Marvel Inc anymore. Maybe he's with Disney or something. He's gone somewhere else. So therefore we can go and change his order to canceled. Okay, remove that order from the order list. And we'll go into his membership and just say, he's not coming back. Okay, always make a note. It's a habit to get into, it's a good habit. Rang and followed up multiple times for his membership payment. No reply. Sorry about my spelling. <laughs> he will not be renewing. Okay, and I'll go and um, change his membership. Oh, let me find the Hulk. Ah, I've got a, um, there you go, expiry date in there that uh, didn't bring it up, there we go. So then I'd go and change his membership to say, okay, normally it will say, or to say cancelled or resigned or in default, whichever one that suits you best, whatever status you've got in your membership. Settings will work for you. 
Okay, so that's generally how you manage those invoices. You know, they'll get a whole bunch of invoices to come through. You decide how long you give them to pay, send them reminders, and if they don't pay, cancel them and change their membership to status. Some other points to note about the order and your feature. One, you can do invoice collation. One thing that um, I didn't go through before when I showed you the auto renewal process was the collation by field. Now, it's a little bit trickier, so I'm going to explain it now. So there is in the auto renewal process, this collation by field, and it's um, by default set to do not collate, but it also allows you to collate individual memberships or organisational memberships. So for example, I've got, um, let's choose multiple membership types in this. We're gonna choose, we wanna, we wanna auto renew all of these membership types at once. What you can do is collate by individual memberships as an example, which means that if, if there is one person that holds multiple memberships in your organization and they are in both in these membership types, we will collate their invoice for both memberships into one invoice. So it, it'll be one invoice for all of their individual memberships, basically, instead of two separate ones. So you can do it um, via organisation as well. So if you do have multiple organisational type memberships that you are auto renewing together, and you have organisations that hold multiple memberships, you can collate them, their invoices together. So that's an option. Not everybody uses it, it is completely optional. The other thing we do have are uh, auto renew custom emails. Now, before I showed you the default email, okay, to en enable and edit the default email for auto renewal. There's the one email. However, there are customized emails that you can also set up. So as you know, uh, some of you may know, under each membership type, okay, there is also an emails tab. And under each emails tab, you can custom, customize. You can see that this one, auto renewal process complete for full memberships has been customized. Okay, so in the modified column, it tells me it's a custom email. So it allows me to send that custom email. So if you do have lots and lots of membership types and you've got different emails you want to send, you can do that. You just need to be careful that if you do use custom emails, be aware that if you do collate your memberships, so if you do collate them and you have multiple membership types in there, the system will go, oh, you know, Fred Smith has a full membership and an honorary membership and there's two custom emails in there, but which one do I send to Fred Smith? The system will go, I don't know which email to send, therefore I'm going to send the default email. So just little thing to be careful of, if you do need to collate your invoices, be aware you may have to um, use the default email instead of the customized email. All right, so that's just something to note. Otherwise, if you don't collate and you have multiple membership types in the, in the um, auto renew process, you can, each membership type will send their own custom email. And lastly, we do have a feature called automatic payments. This isn't a standard part of auto renewal. Automatic payments is a additional feature. It's a plugin option. Um, it is only usable with secure pay. So for those who are on an e-way um, gateway or another, another type of gateway, it won't work on your system. It is only compatible with secure pay. Automatic payments is a process where we can, through secure pay, save someone's credit card details for next year's renewals. So there is, when someone chooses a credit card option on the website, they can tick a box to say, yes, I'm happy for you to save my credit card and their card details are saved for next year. So when you do run the auto renewals, they're not sent an invoice, they're automatically, their money's automatically taken out of their credit card and they're sent a receipt. Okay, so they're still sent the email, they just sent a receipt instead of an invoice because it's already been paid for them. So they don't even have to do anything. So that's actually quite useful. Um, 
So if you want to know more about that, then uh, you can contact us directly for more information. So those who don't have auto renewals and want to know more or want to get it in place, create a help desk ticket uh, and use your login or email support and contact and I'll keep an eye out for those tickets as well um, and let us know and we'll get you a quote um, to get you set up for auto renewals. We do have an updated manual. Um, it's available in the support center under plugin modules, optional plugin modules or the training manual section. So I'll show you where that is. Okay, so in our online support center, we'll just go to instructions. Okay, optional plugin modules, it's right at the top, auto renewal process. Okay, so there's some information about the process plus a link to the manual. Except that's coming up very slowly. <laughs> I think because I'm running go to, go to on my, I'll just bring it up here. Okay, so the auto renewal manual is, it's only 20, it's 20 pages long. So it will go through in detail how it works, what the process is, how to set it up and so on. Okay, so for those who are using it and just wanted some more information, go and um, get access to that new manual and that will give you some more details there. Okay. Beautiful, so before I take questions, um, I think that went really quickly. Before I take questions, our next webcast is on the 12th of December. It is in two weeks. We obviously didn't want to do one at the end of December um, because of obvious reasons. Um, but we will be looking at event registration management. Um, so looking at things like how you manage cancellations for events, how you set up your name tags and print your name tags out, um, your seating arrangements, um, exporting the data that you need, uh, from an event and so on. So uh, we might even um, have a look a little bit of, at event suites at that time as well, which will be a bit exciting too. So thank you for all attending and um, I hope to see you at the event registration management webcast um, and I will take questions now. Thanks, Marla.